Today we're talking about slot battles. Welcome back to Nerd Out, where we take a dive into Cardano, and we break it down, but we don't dumb it down. So today we are talking about the slot battles. And if you remember from our last video, we talked about the slot lottery and the idea that there's this bar our stake pool has to get under, and then we make an attempt every, every slot with the VRF hash to see if we made it under that bar. And if we make it under the bar, then we're allowed to create a block in that slot. So today we're talking about what happens if multiple pools make it under the bar at the same time, because everybody has their own bar. A big pool has the bar set a little bit higher. It's a little easier for them to get under their bar. A small pool, their bar's a little lower. It's, it's a little harder for them to get under their bar. So now we have a fork in the blockchain. There's two options out there floating around. They've been sent around the network. What does the blockchain do? Which option of the fork do we choose? So let's break this down. So if we, if we dive into the Haskell code, there's this idea of chain selection. So whenever there's, um, whenever the node needs to make a decision about which chain of the blockchain to choose for its own chain, what's the source of truth? And if we look at the code, and especially in the comments here, with the chain select view, we kind of really know what's going on. So first of all, when we're choosing between a chain, we look for which chain is the longest. So the longer chain is always preferred. Second, we look at if the tip of the chain has the same slot number, we always prefer the tip that we produced ourselves. Now this is an important point. So if there's if, if I have a core node, and if you have a core node, and we both produce blocks in the exact same slot, each of our nodes is going to sit there thinking that ours is the source of truth until the next block arrives. And that's important because whenever we do something like send our slots or send our blocks to pool tool, if you're using CNCLI to send your, your block to pool tool, you need to point that CNCLI at a core node because the core node is going to keep its own block at the tip. And that way, Pool Tool can always know uh, when it can capture all the orphans, essentially. So if you're running CNCLI with your pool, um, or if your pool operator doesn't know this, you can tell them, make sure to point CNCLI at your core node when you're doing send slots for Pool Tool. That way we always get them sent um, and they capture all the orphans that way. Otherwise, you know, if you're pointing it at a relay, the relay will prune the blocks that were produced by your own node, but the core node will always keep that node at the, at the tip. Um, finally, number three, if the, if, if the two different uh, blocks produced if they were both produced by the same pool. This is just if you have dual leaders running, it'll always prefer the one with the latest Kess key rotation. And finally, this is where the real slot battle comes in. If there's no other way to tell the difference, we pick the leader value of the chain tip with the lowest leader VRF value. And so let's take a look at what that looks like. So this is looking at a pure slot battle. This is an example that happened yesterday. And we're looking at the CNCLI low-level database. And we see that they both produced a, a block in this slot, uh, 2,702,2772. And everything else is the same. You see that the first one uh, was pop two pools block. It got orphaned. They have 52 million in stake. And the second one, it was not orphaned. And they have 60 or 26 million in stake. So this is a key point. Smaller pools actually have a slight advantage when it comes to slot battles. And the reason for this is simple. If you think about those bars, so the larger pool has a higher bar 
to get under. So they have a whole range of values that they that they could land on that would still be allowing them to produce a block. The smaller pool, their bar comes down lower, and so there's less of a range. So when they do produce a, a block in a slot, their leader VRF on average is going to be in the lower range. And you see here that um, pop two's block starts with 0004 and the lower winner Sarga pools started with 003. And so smaller pools do have an advantage in slot battles, but again, it is not guaranteed. And with that, that's how slot battles work. And this nerd is out.